Unfortunately, we were not able to offer a live show due to continued COVID constraints at our HQ and in Japan. We can't wait to bring the event back when we can be together again. Thanks for understanding, and we hope you still celebrate our winners as they deserve. <sighs> well, <sighs> I guess this fucking bleach gag is gonna have to be until next year. So, it seems like Crunchyroll isn't doing a live show this year. I guess not, huh? This kind of, like, ruins the, the video, you know that, right? Like, I'm kind of fucked now. This was an easy video every year, and you're making this harder on me. I guess I'm just going to react to the winners of the Crunchyroll Anime Awards because I'm not giving up on this tradition yet. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your Crunchyroll Anime Awards. It is 1 minute and 50 seconds long. <laughs> the Anime of the Year is... Is... Fucking is... Attack on Titan. Wow! That was so surprising. Not for real though. It did deserve it. It wasn't what I voted, though. Best boy! Best boy! Oh, shit! The best boy is... Wanking of Kings, Boji, a show that's not even FUCKING FINISHED! You have no idea how his character will go. What if he just turns out to be a fucking racist? You have no idea. No idea, Crunchyroll. This video is becoming, like... Not for real though, he pop he he deserves it too, I guess. I forgot who I voted for for best boy. I ain't gonna lie. Best girl, this is the important one. Who's it gonna be? It definitely ain't you, he may. Okay, do they need to do this animation every single time? Oh wow! It's a show that should even been nominated to begin with. Wow, wow, wow. Crunchy Wool, you did it. You did it, Crunchy Wool. You found a loophole in your own system. It wasn't even that Jujutsu Kaisen was split off between cores. It's not like there was a core 1 and a core 2 like there is for Wii Zero or Jobless Reincarnation. It's literally all in one season. The only thing different about Jujutsu Kaisen core 1 and core 2 is the year that they take place in. But that shouldn't even matter because it's not like a new show started in the new year. It was still the previous show. You can't put an anime for last year and then do it for this year just because it ended. That's not how it works. Why are you messing up your own system? Best protagonist. Probably gonna be Aaron Yeager twice just to fuck us, eh? Oh no, it was Adokawa. Hey, I won one. I voted for Adokawa. I'm proud of that. I was worried Aaron Yeager was going to win twice, just so you know. They didn't even include all of them in the video, dog. All right, so here are the all all the winners. Um, oh, whoa, 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 okay. It's in a different order. I could have just... All right, so best animation. Yes, this is your Crunchyroll Anime Awards. Yes. Oh, it was Demon Slayer Mugen Train. Who do 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 Best opening sequence. Was it my wall? It doesn't matter if it's not my wall. All right, Crunchyroll, you ain't so bad. You ain't so bad. Definitely my pick. Um, a lot of basic bitches, for some odd reason, don't like this opening. To them, I say, how about you go outside and touch some snow? Oh, but, but Crybaby didn't win! That's what you sound like. You sound like a fucking Crybaby. That you sound- Oh, oh, Vivid Feist didn't win! Oh, shut the fuck up. Uh, my pussy hurt. Best ending sequence. To be honest, I don't know that one. Um... Nah, nah, I should have won though. I didn't even watch the Mugen Train anime. I watched the movie like like normal people. All right, how about best score? What are we thinking is best score? I honestly don't know. Ah, it's Mugen Train again. Ah, yes. Kota Yamamoto should really just be winning everything. But you know, this isn't the Kick Your Eye anime awards. My anime awards would be better. Best director. Best director is uh, Baku Kinoshita for Odd Taxi. Not a bad pick. Not a bad pick. I actually like that one. I don't think that's the one I voted for. I think I fucked up on this one. Shin Wakayashi is the one I voted for. Even though I was like, 
I immediately disregarded that pick. So if I had to pick a second pick, it would have probably been Yuichiro Hayashi anyway, so I would have lost either way. Best character design is, um, oh wow, a show that shouldn't even have been nominated. Ho 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 ha ho 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 ho, fuck me silly. What do y'all think best romance is? I'm hoping, Loki, Nagatoro, Hoi Mia. That's a basic bitch selection though, I ain't gonna lie. Like, come on, everybody knows Hoi, ho, Hoi Mia, I mean. Come on. This is probably the most I've sworn so far in the video. Am I, am I swearing a lot? I'm sorry. Best drama is, um, To Your Eternity. I feel like Fruits Basket just isn't gonna win anything. What? So what this is teaching me so far is that not enough people watched Fruits Baskets. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ah. Hmm. Best comedy. It was Comey. <laughs> Hey guys, it was it was it was, it was, it was Comey. You wanna know why it was Comey? It's because it's popular. You know, really, if you sat these fuckers down that voted for Comey, they'd probably laugh at Uamiti Nissan more. But they don't know about Uamiti Nissan. Because they're casuals. Best film! I honestly don't care about this film, but we all know what's gonna win it, right? 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 Everybody's here with me now. Mugen Train! Best voice acting Japanese. What do y'all think it is? I think it's going to be something that is actually good. I believe this is a deserving award. Yay! It was a deserving award. You know what? Shout out to David. Shout out to David! Let's get it, David! Yeah! Shout out to David! Wait, huh? I didn't vote for this. Wait, what, huh? Where did these things come up? Hold up, <laughs> what the fuck? So here's the problem here, right? Fruits baskets, it didn't win any- it didn't win anything. It didn't win anything. Jobless reincarnation, didn't win anything. My soul is dying. Because the people who deserve the awards aren't winning the awards, and that makes me sad about that. That's the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, um, so if you only came here to see who won and my reactions to them, there, 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 there you go. I have some other things I want to talk about, specifically with the Quenchua Anime Awards, because I put too much effort into this for it to be ignored by some BS COVID. So, one of the biggest issues for Quenchua, in my opinion, is the fact that there aren't enough nominees to be voted on. And for the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, we only have about six nominees. And for genre, I guess you could say, that releases almost 40 anime per season, meaning that's about 160 anime per year, that's not enough to get every vote, especially when, 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 when you consider that they like to repeat awards. Different shows can get nominated for multiple awards. Here's the problem with that, is that there's only six awards, meaning about, like, maybe maximum 20 anime get recognized. But in reality, we have about 140 more anime that need to get recognized. So here's what I would fix. Just do what anime trending does. Look at, look at this. You see all these people, you see all these nominees right here, and they even missed some for anime of the year as well. Look at all these awards that you can vote for here. Some of these shows... Crunchyroll didn't even have for any awards. Man of the year. Holy crap. Look at all these characters. So this is 21 boys just right here. As I stated, there is at most 20 anime for the entire anime awards. Anime Trending has 21 nominees for each and every award. And all that does is make the awards a lot more fun because a lot more people can win it. It makes the awards less predictable. Sure, all the basic bitches gonna win 100%. Compare this to anything Crunchyroll does, these are 6. 6 compared to 21. Obviously, you can see which is the better one here, and obviously there's less for each show. It's like this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, about 17, maybe 18, maybe I miscounted there. Shows for Anime of the Year that is still a lot more than what Crunchyroll has to offer. So number one fix... For Crunchyroll Anime Awards, for the actual voting system, because really, who cares about the live event? Just add more nominees! Like, yeah, you can throw your Jujutsu Kaisens in there. Is it a bullshit nominee, in my opinion? Yes. You yeah, throw Aaron Yeager on Best Antagonist and Best Protagonist. Is it a bullshit nominee? Yes. But, when you have 20, 17, 30 fucking people to vote for, 
it doesn't matter because it just it's a lot more fun when you have more people to select. And I understand this might be a little bit too much for the casual viewer, which is what Crunchyroll panders to. They don't want to admit it, but come on, let's be honest here. Look at who won this year for the awards. All of those shows were popular. Every single one of them, a casual fan would know. Who cares about if the casual person can't vote for every single nominee? As long as you have a couple popular characters in there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, you can throw in Red for Best Boy, or Yoshida for Best Boy, or Tomozaki for Best Boy, or Lube for Best Boy. But yeah, you can still have your Subarus, your Woodies. You know, these characters, Kyo, Shine, you know, all these characters, even like a Wimawu. So that's my solution. To really fix most of the voting system, while, yeah, some of the nominees all not fail, just add more. I'm tired of, of voting for six. This has been around for years at this point. So, here's what I did to, um, help out Crunchyroll a little bit. And listen up, I don't, I don't think Crunchyroll is going to watch this video. I don't think Crunchyroll is going to care, really. However, fuck, fuck that. So, here are all the nominees for the anime awards that CR missed. Now, these are just in my opinion. I did not watch every show entering the year. I did not see everything. I'm not a monster. I'm not someone who can just watch anime 24-7. You should add most of them because a lot of these shows are worth noting. They're worth mentioning for the year. And if anime trending can do it, Crunchyroll can 100% do it. So let's get this started. Anime of the year, Fruits Baskets should have definitely been on anime of the year. Jobless Reincarnation. Look, I understand a lot of people don't like this show. I get it. But just looking at it non-biased, fuck your morality. Just looking at it objectively. Does it absolutely deserve to be anime of the year? Yes. Yes, it does. It at least deserves to be nominated. This is a show where the story is amazing. The animation is flawless. The characters, while yes, I get a lot of people don't like Rudy, I get it, I get it. The emotional scenes hit because you care so much about these characters. The drama in this show, it's everything. It's literally everything an isekai should be, and the fact it wasn't even nominated, that's disheartening to me. Vivi, sure, is it the anime of the year that I thought it was in June? No. No, no, no. It wasn't. It really should have been an, an, an anime of the year. And to be honest, all the shows I named are better than Sony Boy. You could argue all these shows that I just named are better than 86 and Jujutsu Kaisen. You could argue that. All the shows I just named are potentially better than 86 Jujutsu Kaisen, and they're definitely better than Sony Boy. A hundred, you could definitely argue that. And then To Your Eternity. This is more of a me pick. Because throughout my entire watching of Two Year Eternity, I was in love with it. It was a little bit predictable during Tanari's arc. It was a little bit predictable during Gugu's arc. The emotional moments. It hit you when it needed to. Fushi as a character really deserved more nominations. And if you're going to include Sony Boy, then add more nominations because these shows are all miles better than Sony Boy. I loved Sony Boy. I loved how different it was. I loved how unique it was. You could also throw in a couple anime in there if you really want to. Um, those were just the basic picks. Best Boy, Rudy, deserved it. Kyo or Yuki. So whenever I put all, you can basically choose who you want to choose. The two characters that I don't think should go in together, but they're characters who should be nomination either one or the other, so that's why I put all. So Rudy, Kyo, or Yuki. You could put either one in, on there. I would vote for Kyo. But you can also throw in Yuki if you want to, from Fruits Basket. Subaru, who oddly didn't make the list at all. Wimuru, should have made the list too. Fushi or Gugu, I would opt for Fushi, but if you want to go with Gugu just because he has more of a cute factor to him, you can. Vanitas or Noe. Uh, Boat-chan, uh, Iwama, who really should just always be on the best boy list. And Undertaker, should have really been on the list. Best girl, Ares, Waxy. Notice I didn't put all there. Ares and Waxy should both be in it. If you can throw Mikey and Dragon for best boy together, you can throw in Ares and Waxy for best girl together. Nagatoro, because she was one of the most popular girls of the year. Again, controversial selection, but really, should controversy really be the determining factor on whether something gets nominated for an award? Toru, Alulu, Kana, or Kobayashi. You can really pick 
any of the Dragon Maid girls. Just throw in one of them in there. Vivi. You should have had Vivi in there. You should have had Amelia in there. Nino and or Miku and or literally any quintuplet. The fact no quintuplet got on this list at all speaks volumes to me. This is one of the only harem shows where all of the girls are great. I'd opt for Nino or Miku. But again, any quintuplet would do. Jahi, just for the popularity meme factor. Go, who was in um fun who was a fun little girl at the very end of the year. Best protagonist, Rudy! Literally Rudy. You can throw him in for best boy or best protagonist. I don't care. Throw him in for both if you really want to. Fushi deserved it just because he grew every arc. Subaru's, Subaru's one of the best isekai protagonists out there. Takamichi, he was pretty, he was pretty fun, in my opinion. Even though I did not like the fact he cried all that much, but I, that was kind of the point. Toru, Katarina, Miko, Yatoa, and Moriarty. I feel like a lot of people forgot about Moriarty. Um, I understand the ending sucked, but everything before the ending was great. You can acknowledge the fact that the show was good up until the ending. Best Antagonist. I really didn't have a lot for Best Antagonist because I felt this year was a little weak in that regard. Best Antagonist I really didn't have a lot for, so I'm gonna have Akito and Hayase. Akito because she she is probably who I would have voted for Best Antagonist if... And Hayase who, if we're going based off, like, an antagonist should be hated, which they did that for Wait Show last year, Hayase was probably the most hated antagonist for me. Best fight scene, uh, Jobless Reincarnation, any, any Jobless Reincarnation fight scene, Elsa vs. Garfield, any Wonder Egg Priority fight scene, just pick any of them. Titans Finale, or any Tato P fight. I would like Titans finale though because I feel like that was the highlight of the show. And any Vanitas fight. The fact Vanitas wasn't in any fight scene award kind of speaks volumes to me. No Shinpei Izaki because I thought Vivi was really well directed in both the action scenes and in the story. And the story progressed very nicely even with all the time skips. Manibu Okamoto for Jobless Reincarnation. Haro Sotozaki for Demon Slayer. Um, Ishe Toshimasa for 86, Tomoyuki Itamura for Vanitas, Nobuyoshi Nagayama for Uamichi, because not every good director show has to be action based. I feel like the comedic timing in Uamichi really deserved it. The fact that Uamichi didn't win Best Comedy is kind of nuts to me right now. I'm still kind of not over that. Because while I did enjoy Komi-san, I didn't enjoy it as a comedy more than Uami. Masahiko Murata for Two Year Eternity. Uh, Yoshiaki Kyogoku for Yoro Camp. And Shinya Kawasura for Nananbioi. Because, again, I feel like directed shows don't need to be always action based. I feel like you can have a slice of life show that's well directed. And um, Yoro Camp and Nananbioi are two shows that do that extremely well. When you have the chill vibe of a Slice of Life show, those two shows are some of the most chill, relaxing, laid-back vibes in all of Slice of Life anime, and I feel like it at least deserves a nomination for that. Because the main point of a Slice of Life is to be relaxing, correct? And I feel like they do that very well. Both shows. In fact, they're two of my favorite Slice of Life shows ever because of that reason. Best Animation, Attack on Titan. I don't care how much controversy was about this show, about the goddamn CGI Titans. I'm gonna be real with y'all. I have seen bad CGI before from Crunchyroll themselves. The Attack on Titan Titans were not that. They were not that at all. Y'all are just overreacting because, again, you hold Attack on Titan to the standard that Wit set. And when you hold standards to an almost impossible standard, especially since MAPPA was rushed to finish that season, you're kind of being unfair. And you're recognizing the bad without recognizing the good. We Zero Part 2. For some odd reason, they want to throw Jujutsu Kaisen out there that didn't have a split core when We Zero had a split core. And it released in the winter season. And it had some of the best animated scenes of the year. Really, if you had more nominees, you can throw 86 and Vanitas in there because they're two amazingly animated shows. SSSS, some of the most underrated animation of the year. Go watch SSSS, I'm telling you. A uh, Yuru Camp, because again, animation doesn't always have to be action-based. 
I did the same thing with Aquatope, Zombieland Saga, because that show has always had good animation, especially since it's a comedy and an outrageous comedy at that, so it's kind of fun to see how messed up it can go, similar to Akagyo-sama. Honestly, Itadin, I only threw it on here because it's a really fun animated show. It's nuts. Best character design I didn't have a lot for. Miyuku-chan, Vanita, Sonny Boy. Sonny Boy should have really been on there because just how uh, different it was. How outdated it felt. And in a good way. Best score. Jobless Reincarnation. There has been no isekai I've seen so far that really made it feel like a fantasy. More than Jobless Reincarnation. The music plays a big, a big part in that. It feels like a fantasy RPG game. Which is what it should feel like, because it's a goddamn isekai. Attack on Titan. I understand why they didn't throw Attack on Titan in this, because it had Kota Yamamoto and Sawano for 86. Just because, you know, Kota Yamamoto already had a show nominated doesn't mean he didn't deserve one for Attack on Titan as well, because he absolutely did. Watch any show from Yuu Camp, and I'm telling you, you will feel instantly relaxed. The music has a lot to do with that. Zombieland Saga Revenge. And Tacto P. Destiny, just for the use of classical music. There was a part in Tacto P. Destiny where they didn't use classical music for a fight scene, and that just felt odd because every other fight scene had classical music in it. That one had a rock track. I don't know why, but besides that, the, the use of classical music when, when uh, Tact was playing the piano, it was some of the best scenes in the show. Yeah, the best voice actor, Uchiyama Yumi, who played Rudy. You could also throw in the, um, I forgot his name, but the guy who plays older Rudy, who also played Joseph Joestar in Gian Toki. Who's, who's great. I just, his name is not coming to me right now, and I should have put him on here, but you could also throw him in there. Ayane Sakura, who played Saki Saki in Girlfriend Girlfriend. It was a meme choice, but again, you kind of need meme choices on there just to make the awards a lot more fun. Ayane Sakura really did a good performance as Saki Saki. Her performance is one of the reasons that show was so enjoyable to me. It was because of her reactions to the things around her. Because of how dickish her boyfriend was being. Because of just everything that went down in that show. Her voice acting made that a lot more fun for me. I would rather have Kana for this one, personally, because I think Drew's performance was fantastic, but if you want to throw in Jai, as well, you can. Hiyoshi Mania for Uamichi, Omamuro Miyano for Ikiteru, Yuki Shin for Takimichi, uh, Sumere Uisaka for Nagatoro, because her voice fit Nagatoro so perfectly that it's hard to ignore. I don't want to hear anybody else voicing Nagatoro but Sumire Uisaka because her voice fit that well. Jun Fukuyama who played Matsumoto or Jun Fukuyama who played Dracula. You could really choose either one of these. Um, Jun Fukuyama, does, he deserves it for Matsumoto because he explained the exposition pretty well. He did the character who was very fast speaking. There's a fly in my room, you cunt. He did the fast speaking robot character pretty well. And then Jun Fukuyama for Dracula. Um, from, um, The Vampire Dies in No Time. Monika Iwami for Toru and Yusuke Kobayashi for Subaru because I'm pretty sure Subaru won it last year. So why wouldn't he also be in Best BA this year? It just doesn't make any sense. Best OP, To Your Eternity, definitely deserved it. While yes, my vote was always gonna be my war, I already talked about why I love the Two Eternity opening so much in my review of it, which I still stand by. Nagatoro for the use of colors and it just being really freaking catchy. The Vampire Dies in No Time for just being a really smooth beat, a really jazzy opening, which are the best kind of openings. Call me. Because it, it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good opening with the animation style and the art and, you know, the song's pretty good too. And Tato P Destiny because it made me do that. That deserves a vote. Best action, ReZero. For some odd reason, wasn't on there. Jobless Reincarnation, again, for some odd reason, just wasn't on there. I literally don't get how you can watch a Jobless Reincarnation fight scene and don't immediately go, that's fight of the year. I don't, I don't see how you do that. And then talk to P. Destiny, because again, the fight scenes were the best aspect of the show, and admittingly, the Tato P. Destiny fight scenes are amazing. Really, when I looked to see like what comedies were released this year, I was shocked at just how much Crunchyroll missed. And I actually do want to show this because I have a lot more to say about the comedy stuff. Odd Taxi, though. That's not a comedy show. Just because a show has comedic aspects, that doesn't make it a comedy. Odd Taxi's not a comedy. 
Similarly with like Heaven's Design Team, which I don't think is as funny as the shows on there. But again, if you want to just include more nominees, you can do this and include bullshit like Our Taxi on there. Combatments will be dispatched. For as much as Crunchyroll seems to love Konosuba, I thought this would be a gimme for them. But um, Combatments will, will say will be dispatched is by the Konosuba creator. It's, you know, about as wanchy and perverted as Konosuba. In fact, it's a lot, it's a lot more perverted. The vampire dies in no time. I understand that the premiere episode was really bad for this show, but every other episode made me laugh hysterically. I thought it was amazing. The voice actors all did incredible. I loved the side characters, the ridiculous evil villains. Zombie Land Saga Revenge, shot it didn't even get voted on at all, because again, I thought Crunchyroll really liked Zombie Land Saga, but I guess not. Um, it's just another show that deserves to be on there because it's, it's really funny. Again, is it a parody of an idol show? I don't think so, but, you know, it's still a funny show. And then Jahi, Taisho Otom, definitely deserved a boat. I understand a lot of people don't like the age thing, which we'll get to with another show, as you can see there. Banished from the Heroes Party, I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside. Was surprised that didn't even get voted on there because it really did deserve it. If there was a best couple vote, I feel like that was where Wed and Wit would have probably been voted on there. But they got rid of it for some reason. Koikimo. Again, is it weird? You could argue that. So bad about age difference when you're promoting two species fucking and, you know, whatever the fuck's going on with Nagatoro. <laughs> best fantasy. Honestly, I only had one. We Zero. I really don't know how a show can win an award the previous year and then the core 2 comes out the next year doesn't even get nominated for the same award despite it literally being a better version of the previous core. It doesn't make sense. I would have still voted for Jabba's Reincarnation over We Zero, I'm being completely honest. But it still should have been voted for at the very least. Final part of this video is um just something I wanted to throw in here. The everlasting debacle of Aaron Yeager. Now this is important because Aaron Yeager, as we all know, got voted for both protagonist and antagonist. And I saw a lot of people totally upset at this. And my opinion was Aaron Yeager is kind of a villain. I think I was wrong and I want to own up to it. So here it is. Alright, so um, I'm just going to read this part. If you agree, hey, if you disagree, leave it in the comments. Because really talking about a character like Aaron Yeager, someone who's so complex, is fun to me. So let's get this out of the way now. To keep this part short, Crunchyroll listed Aaron Yeager as a protagonist and an antagonist, despite that literally being impossible by definition. An antagonist is just a character that goes against the protagonist. It has nothing to do with morality or actions that character may have did. In the example of Attack on Titan, depending on your stance, Aaron Yeager is either an anti-hero or an anti-villain. He cannot be both. At the reflection, I realize I may have misjudged Aaron due to Crunchy War's weird placements of him on the nomination. Aaron is more of a protagonist than he is an antagonist. We still follow Aaron. It's still his story, just like Lelouch at the end of Code Geass. The antagonist in Attack on Titan would be Marley, Weiner, etc. Aaron is presented differently, but he is still the protagonist. I feel Crunchyroll thinks the protagonist should be the hero, when in reality, it is an entirely different grouping. A hero in Attack on Titan would be Owen, or Levi, despite his negative character traits. Attack on Titan has always presented Eren as someone who isn't a hero. He is constantly being saved by others, who would be classified as heroes. I'm not sure what I was really on during the votings. While I do see my point, looking back, I was wrong. Even though someone like Gabby is who I feel is more of a protagonist, especially since I think she has a lot of similarities between Season 1 and 2 Aaron, it is still not her story. I only really voted for Aaron for Best Antagonist because I didn't find the other nominees as interesting as him. And hey, if you guys disagree with me about Aaron being a villain, especially since the whole wumbling thing is starting now, which is a big moment in the show, and I am absolutely loving it so far. I just absolutely love how much death is in Attack on Titan so far. Um, then yeah, you can disagree with me, because I, I can definitely see the point where Aaron Yeager would be considered an antagonist. My main argument is that 
Aaron Yegos should not be both. He is not a protagonist and an antagonist. That is literally impossible by definition. And keep in mind, I don't have anything against Crunchyroll. While I do disagree with their business practices and just their, um, their reputation as a whole is starting to really degrade for me as the years go by, I'm still going to continue doing the Crunchyroll Anime Awards just because I find it fun. I find it entertaining. Of course, I didn't find it fun this year because there was no event. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have fun out there. I'm Kiki Eye. And have a good...